In this video, I'll be talking about the Commodore Super Pet. These were developed in a joint venture between Commodore and the University of Waterloo in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada in 1980. They hit the market in September of 1981. They're dual CPU machines that can boot to the familiar Commodore BASIC prompt running on the 6502 CPU, just like an 8032 PET, or they can boot into a University of Waterloo development environment running on a Motorola 6809 CPU. I'll be booting in 6809 mode and running through a Hello World example in every programming language natively available in the Waterloo development environment. Sit back, relax, and let's have some fun. I booted with the switch on the side set to 6809 mode, which results in the Super Pet booting to the screen you see here, rather than the familiar Commodore Basic Ready prompt. This screen is loaded out of ROM, so no disk is required up to this point. The first two menu options, Setup and Monitor, also run out of ROM, so they can be selected without needing to have the Waterloo language disk inserted. Any menu item shown can be selected by just typing the first letter of that menu item and pressing Return. If you type anything other than the first letter shown, the Super Pet will attempt to load what you typed as a literal file name from Logical Device 1. You'll see this a little bit later when we're ready to load the COBOL environment. In this video, I'm going to walk through a Hello World example in every programming language that's natively supported by the Waterloo Super Pet environment. Let's get started with BASIC by pressing B and hitting return. For the sake of your sanity, I'm going to edit out all the loading time. The BASIC interpreter is loaded. Notice that this is Waterloo BASIC, not the Microsoft BASIC that's so familiar to Commodore users. I'm not going to go into too much detail on program syntax here, and I don't know that anyone would need me to explain Hello World and BASIC anyway, so let's get down to business here. Wonderful! Let's go back to the main menu and try Fortran next. As you just saw, Waterloo BASIC provided a screen editor like the native Commodore screen editor. The rest of the Waterloo programming languages rely on the Waterloo micro editor to enter your code. While Waterloo's micro editor may seem hostile when you interact with it in 2022, in 1980, I expect it would have been familiar. It's a line-oriented text editor similar to ED on Unix at the time, or the more recent VI. Like VI, it has two main modes of operation. Command mode, where it expects you to give it a command like save the file to disk or quit the program, or what it calls screen mode, which is the mode in which you're actually editing text. The way you toggle between screen mode and command mode is by pressing shift 5 and shift 8 on the number pad. Don't worry, there are stickers on the front of the keycaps on the Super Pet to guide you. These stickers come in especially handy when you're programming in APL. We begin in command mode. I'll get started by pressing shift 0 to insert a line, which implicitly puts us in screen mode. Now we enter our Fortran program. Back to command mode. Wonderful. Let's move on to Pascal next. Ah, oh, that brought back memories. Okay, let's try COBOL now. I mentioned earlier how you can just type the first letter of any menu item shown, or whatever you type will be loaded as the literal file name of what you type. Well, notice there's no COBOL listed on the main menu. Waterloo didn't make COBOL available until after the menu ROM was created, so you have to know to type the program name COBOL to load the COBOL interpreter.
COBOL is a very structured language, and a good chunk of our Hello World program is going to be spent just defining that structure. Everything you see here is required by the language syntax. Because it's a lot of typing, I'm going to speed this section up. Nice. Next up, APL. Hello World and APL is sort of cheating, because all you have to do is type Hello World and close in quotes, and you're done. So, I'll store that in a function that we can call, so at least it seems like we're executing a program. The del or nabla character I just typed is how you tell APL you want to store something as a function. APL requires you to invoke all manner of characters that you're not used to typing on a standard computer keyboard. The Super Pet accommodated this with stickers on the front of the keycaps. Del is shift G. Very satisfying. Let's move on to assembly language. D is the menu option for the development environment we need for programming an assembly language. Xref tells the compiler that the put care label is an external reference. That is, it'll be provided by one of the standard Waterloo libraries. I only mention this now because we'll need to know this when we get to the linker phase. Quick time out here. Everybody who has ever programmed a pet in assembly language knows there isn't a B register on the 6502. What is this magic, then, with loading memory into the B register? Well, remember, the Waterloo environment is all running on the Motorola 6809 CPU in the Super Pet, so we're writing 6809 assembly language here, not 6502. I'll save the file now using the p or put command. I have to use a suffix of .asm because that's what the assembler is going to be looking for. Great, our file's saved. Now we can launch the assembler and assemble it. Our program has been assembled into machine code now, but I can't run it just yet. Remember when I used that external put care library routine in my code? Before we can run our code, we have to link in that external reference. To do that, I'll create a command file to tell the linker what we needed to do. Then I can invoke the linker. I'll provide a very brief explanation of what's in the command file. The hello line is the name of the module we want the linker to create. The output of the linker will therefore be a file named hello.mod. Next is the start address of our executable, hex 1000. The include directive tells the linker where to find the put care reference we used in our assembly code. Finally, hello.b09 is the name of the object code output file that was created by the assembler.
Now I'm going to launch the machine language monitor so I can execute our code. The L command will load our file from disk. Now I'll use the G command to go to our start address of hex 1000 and execute. That's all the Waterloo languages I have to show you, but before I go, I'm going to switch back to 6502 mode, which you can do while the machine's running, by the way, and then I'm going to close us out with a familiar Commodore basic hello world.